Monsignor Jamie on our next episode of Breaking Bread. Our chef comes to us all the way from Italy, but she has a great restaurant on the Lower East Side, so don't go away. Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Bread. Today I have with us as our guest, Beatrice Toste. Beatrice, where are you? Cuckoo! Hello, everybody! Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank Good you for you. coming. Give me another kiss. As you said, it's Definitely. a long time in coming. Long time. I'm so coming. glad you're here. I am very honored you asked me to come over. And I'm honored to have you on our show. So I have to say something. I'm not a chef, I am a cook. Okay. I'm not a chef, I'm a priest. Yeah, exactly. So zero chef in the house. No, but you are a you... cook and a priest. I am very happy to be just a cook. But you're a very good chef. Too. I am a very good cook. <laughs> I like that. That's good. It's good to be a little modest, yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> what? what? But now tell me first. Uh, you yeah. were born in Italy. Yes, I was Sicily? born in Rome. Oh, Rome. From my dad, part of the family were like uh, from Campania, Napoli, Puglia, long okay. time. I know you're from Salerno. Yes. And that, but I was born and raised in Rome, and then I moved to New York. Okay. In '89. Okay. And then in '92, I met my husband. Okay. Julio. Yes. Okay. Now is he a chef? Oh no, neither He's a, a cook? chef nor a cook. Nor, no. He makes amazing Ritz cracker sandwiches with a little slice of apple in them. Oh, nice. That's his thing. And then we opened Il Bagato in 95. Right, and that's on the Lower East Side. It was on the Lower East Side because right. we closed it in 2013, but in 99, we had opened next door a place called Il Posto Accanto, which means the place next door. Okay. And, and it's still open. Which I've been there many times. Yes. The food is excellent. Yes, thank you. So now, um, you you're in the restaurant business and uh, 25, 25 years. 25 years. Now the recipes that you cook, are they from Italy? Are they from yes. here? Or? They are from Italy. And then I think, you know, being in America that you have so many wonderful ingredients, you base your Italian traditional cooking and you make it a little bit exotic, American exotic, exotic for us. But I like to cook simple food that I know that I love. I don't cook anything I don't like. Right. So on the menu we have tripe, for example. Oh, I like tripe. I like You're like tripe. me, I only cook things I, I like. And yeah. things I don't like, I eliminate yeah, them. Exactly. Like Why? capers, you know, yeah. oh, no, certain I things like papers. that. <laughs> oh, I love papers. Olives. Oh, you don't like olives don't either? Olives. Any kind. No, any type of Not olive. even Castelvetrano. No, They're no, so no, sweet. No, no. Monsignor so Jamie, we're going to have to try. Have you ever tried fried olives? Ascolano? No, no, but I, I did have a stuffed olive. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not the same With thing. pimento. Yeah. In my martini. Well, yeah. <laughs> but then you don't have to eat it, right? No. <laughs> and that's the good thing about cooking. You can do anything you want. Exactly. You can be creative. And I also that. don't think I would cook well stuff I don't like to eat. Right. No. And But you put a lot of love into it. And that's all that it's counts. It's all the love. I put love going to the farmer's market five times a week, buying the ingredients, Fresh. cooking them. It's just, it's really ingredient-based food. And it's because the restaurant is small, as you know, it's like a dinner party every day for friends. I don't have to cook mass quantities. Right. And that's what's great about, you know, cooking, just like in Italy, you're cooking everything fresh from the farm to the table. Exactly. And that's what makes it so great. Yeah. You know, that's what makes it special. And that's what, what makes great being in New York City, where we have the farmer's market. Exactly. With daily care. I'm never thankful enough for our farmers. We're lucky because if we, you know, so we have lucky. food from all over the world exactly. within 24 hours and, and it's fresh. And that's why I guess why there's so many restaurants in New York and we're the, yeah. the cuisine capital of the world, exactly. no matter what. Yes. But uh, when we get back, Beatrice is going to prepare one of her great recipes from Italy. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have as our guest Beatrice Toste from Italy, but she has a great restaurant on the Lower East Side called Il Bagato. So she's going to be preparing a nice dish. What are you preparing today, Beatrice? So tonight, the name of the restaurant is Il Posto Accanto. Il Bagato used to be the old one. This is Il Posto Accanto, okay. 190 East 2nd Street. Be tonight, true. I'm going to prepare okay. a Roman dish, but with a little homage to Campania, to Naples. Amatriciana, okay. guanciale. Guanciale is the face bacon, the cured jowl of the pig, 
with a spicy tomato sauce. I know you like spicy. Yes, yes. <laughs> but instead of making it with bucatini or rigatoni, like we make it in Rome, I'm making it with paccheri. Okay. Which is a typical Napolitan pasta. You know what paccheri? It's like rigatoni, but it's, a, it's much bigger. Much bigger. Do you know what paccheri means in Napolitan? Paccheri. Smack. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Allora, super simple. Guanciale. Why don't you explain what guanciale is? Guanciale is the cured uh, jowl of right. a happy pig. In and this there's case. a lot of fat in there. Yes. It's like and a, very a lot of flavor. Pancetta. It's That's like a why very... you don't need a lot. But you know, the rendering is what gives the flavor right. to the sauce. Okay. Then uh, tomato sauce, some uh, peperoncino calabrese, pecorino. This is all you need in the pasta. So I already cut the guanciale and we're gonna put it. We don't want the guanciale to cook at a fire that is too high because it will burn and not be very nice. Right, Become too crispy. Exacto. We love crispy, we don't like burnt. Right. So while these crisps... You have a little olive oil in there? I, I put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, but it's gonna render plenty. So, uh, while this cook, it's gonna take a minute. I have cooked for you before, right, Monsignor Jamie? Yes, yes. We know each other and we meet each other always in eating establishments. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I can keep my girly figure and I go yes. and eat out. So, okay, so this is the water for the pasta. The water for the pasta, in Italy we use coarse sea salt for our pasta water. Why? because salt was a very expensive ingredient and people, the monopoly, the state used to own all the rights to sell salt. The coarse sea salt was less expensive than the fine because of course less labor. And so in the water for the pasta, you uh, put the coarse one and I still do. It's cheaper. It is, yeah, not now. No. Can you smell the... Yes. Make wonderfulness sure. that is yes. this guanciale. Once the fat burns off and renders off, you have all the uh, extra oil in the pan. Which is going to give the taste, taste too. Because it would be very little guanciale and a lot of tomato. This is poor people cuisine. And poor people are poor, they're not stupid. Right, they know good food. You know they do. <laughs> and most of the good food comes <laughs> from exact look at the oxtail oxtail was something that nobody would eat ever right and now it's as expensive as filet almost yes polenta cornmeal exactly <laughs> so many things like that you know roman cuisine is very of the persuasion of the poor cucina de recupero you know repurposed leftovers and stuff like that and um this dish is one of them we're gonna increase a little bit the temperature so we don't stay here until Easter. Okay. You smell that, right? I wish you could smell it. And it doesn't really smell like bacon because it is not bacon. Right. I was in the Bronx two weeks ago and they were done. They didn't have it and now it's curing. You can see they put it on the you? ceiling, yeah on the ceiling and they uh, and they cure it and it takes around two, three weeks. So I think next week I'm gonna have to go back. And that's why you have the gas not too high. Because, you don't because want I don't want it to, to burn. It. Right, and burn. I also have magically some already done in case. Right. So what is your favorite things to cook, Monsignor Jamie? Oh, I like to cook basically Italian food. That I don't is... cook that often because I am very busy, as you know. But um, I do like to cook when I have dinner parties over. I, I, I make a vari variations of pasta. Or like something. what? I'll make uh, some with uh, a little cream sauce, uh, you know. Okay. I'll make a little carbonara sauce. I know you like linguine with clams. Yes, linguine with clams. And sometimes I make the orecchietti with the sausage. And nice. The and then uh, for meat, I like to make some different types of fish. I like to make shrimp, uh, oregano. Ah, you know, certo. Like fresh items, quick, nothing heavy, nothing with a lot of sauces. Exacto. Fresh ingredients and... Uh, so, Monsignor Jamie, I, I always make fun with everybody because, you know, I'm a bit of a porketarian. I don't like, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I cannot resist pork. 
And, and then, you know, I know this might come as a surprise to you, but I am a salad freak. Really? I adore salad. Okay. There's always salad. So this morning I went to the farmer's market and I got the first uh, radicchio. This is radicchio Castelvetrano. Right. Look how beautiful. Yes. Isn't it? I got radicchio. All these ingredients come from the farmer's market. This morning I made a little dressing. Nice. But for me, a plate okay, so of you pasta have some corn and on salad. The cob yes, that you took I grilled the cob, it. You grilled it. And... The frise, the wild arugula, and then I have some escarole that was all from Mixed. the kids at the farmers market. That looks good. Yes. So we now love tell me, what are, what are some of the uh, traditions that you have in Rome that maybe you took here to the United States? Before? Well, I, the carbonara is right. a, a traditional dish that I think I make a pretty good version of. Now you don't use cream. No, of course not. Okay. Or onion. All right. American, they use cream and onion. They think cream is carbon. No, no, no. Egg yolks. Egg? No, the whole egg with a little bit of pecorino in it. Okay. And the pecorino is what gives it the creaminess. Yes. And then, of course, amatriciana. Amatriciana is another version. If you cook this without the tomato sauce, it's called grisha. So you saute the pasta just with this, the rendering, and pecorino. Yeah. Amazing. And then, you know, because I don't come from a family of restaurateurs, I cook a little bit from my travels in Italy. So, you know, we would go to southern Tuscany in the summer at the beach. So right. I have little things from there. We would ski in Cortina, so some things from oh, there. Oh, I went to ski in Cortina. Did you Beautiful. love it? Oh, so nice. Mountains, oh. And, you know, and so they make these amazing casunziai that are ravioli stuffed with uh, red beet that they serve just with butter and... Um, Poppy seeds, that is insane. And you find it just in that valley, just in the valley of Ampezzo. So we would go, and every time we would go back to Rome, we would bring pounds and pounds and pounds wow. of uh, casunziai with us. The guanciale is nice and crispy. Okay. And now we're gonna put our tomato sauce. Hoping nothing is exploding. Now, what you put in your tomato sauce? Anything? Love. Love? Uh, <laughs> celery, carrot, and onion. Okay. I think this is enough tomato sauce. I'll take that. Put a little finger inside the tomato sauce. It's nice tomato sauce. Delicious. Yes. And I like a little thick sauce. I yeah. don't like it's too loose. No, we don't. It's the vegetable because then I grind it with the vegetable in right. it. Right. So this takes, you know, five minutes for the uh, flavors to blend, but I'm sure it's very flavorful. We're gonna put some of this wonderful peperoncino. It's hot pepper? Yeah. Oh, be careful. Oh, be careful. No worry, no problem. Don't worry. Don't worry be they happy. call me Vulkanovic, <laughs> so I don't worry for me. What do they call you? Volkanovich, because volcano. A volcano. Yeah, because I love super spicy. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we're going to just warm up our pasta. Okay. No, no, I don't want you to get burned, sorry. Okay. So that's already pot cooked. Yes. I follow directions, right, instructions. I hope that everybody like pasta al dente because it's- Yes, easy. the only way you can eat pasta. Thank you. I okay. agree wholeheartedly. Okay, l'ultimo paccheri. One more. No paccheri left behind. <laughs> and then the paccheri are going to go by the, I need to, just because I am a little crazy, I need, okay. I like to not drain the pasta. I like to pull the pasta from the water. I think that the starch does a number on the pasta. If when you, you're draining it. Yeah. You know, someone else told me that. Yeah. And also, you like to put the pasta into the sauce exactly. rather than the sauce into the pasta. See. So that the flavors marry and combine. Yes. This is going to be a saucy pasta. That looks good. I like a lot of sauce. We have no choice right now, okay. Monsignor. Well, you have a lot of pasta <laughs> in there. 
Well, we want everybody to try, right? Oh, yes. Now, it, is this on your menu in the restaurant? This is on my menu in the restaurant, okay. of course. And it's a brunch favorite. Okay. Now we're gonna just saute it for a little second. And we're gonna douse it in pecorino. Okay. As you notice, I didn't put any salt because the guanciale is salted. Right. And the pecorino is gonna be salted too. Just give me one second to make this at least pretend like it's all mixed, and then we're gonna put the pecorino. Wow, that looks good. And only that, when you're cooking into the pan, it keeps the pasta hot. Exactly. As well. And also, you know, you always wanna get the pasta. A little, um, a little al dente, extra al dente, so then you finish to cook it with the with the sauce. Right. Mm. That is to die for. <laughs> that smells so nice. Not to toot my own horn, but. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now is this the recipe that I sent you a couple of years yes, ago? Yes, you did exactly. Okay. That would be exactly sure. that one. <laughs> How did I ever open the restaurant if I didn't have you? I, I don't know. Never, I mean... ever, continue, Jamie. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Ed eccoci qua. So how long did it take us? Maybe 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Right? To make this wonderful. Shopping Pacchi is the most amatriciana. Good. And then I have this little dressing to put. Of the salad? Yes. It's a red wine vinegar dressing. And this is your dinner. Okay, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Be Don't right go back. away. When we come back, we're going to taste this wonderful pasta. <laughs> Welcome back to Breaking Bread and we're ready to try this delicious pasta. Paccheri Amatriciana. Okay. Paccheri pasta from Napoli, Amatriciana sauce from Rome. That I'm going to give good. you the bits with the pecorino on top yes. because good. I put all the pecorino in. Okay. Wow, that looks good. Perfect. That's for me. Okay. Three. Three? Si. All right. Chin chin, Monsignor. Chin chin. I love paccheri because they're sneaky, and so the sauce goes inside. Right. Mm -hmm. And these are big pastas, and sometimes you have to cut them in half. <laughs> but like you said... Not this chubby girl. <laughs> it goes inside. <laughs> mm. You want it a little spicier? That's good for me. That is excellent. But you didn't get really any one shot of a back. It's okay. I did. Okay, fantastic. Now I have a couple of pieces here. Tell me. Mm. I listen to you. Do you miss Italy? No. You know. <laughs> How old were you when you came here? 26. And I am 56. Okay. So 30 years. Have you gone back? All the time. All the time. But my you like to visit, there. but you like living here. I love baby cakes. I love my husband. Oh. That's why I love it here. That's wonderful. And you're in business together, so that's great. So you see each other a lot. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> no, and I'm not sure. Now, downtown in the Lower East Side, no. you're on 2nd Street yeah, between, between A and, a and B. B. See? Now, that area, you have there's a lot of people that are like, you know, a little homeless, yeah. you know, a little yeah. run down at times. But so, we love them. A lot of junkies. Really? Yes. But, you know, they know that for 25 years, if they're hungry, they can come over and there is always food for them. Really? They're all adopted. So you help them all out? You know, the reason why we are in this world, for me, it's to be of service. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And that's why... And you're able to do that in that neighborhood where exactly. you are. And exactly. That's wonderful. Yes. And they're eating good food. You know they are. You know they come back. They don't get this in the shelter. No, they don't. No, they don't. But you know what? It is really such uh, so rewarding to be able to help and to be able to give them good food and to see them, you know, not maybe thriving, but at least yeah. having food. Yeah. And that comes from our upbringing. It comes from our parents and what they taught us and exactly. how we grew up and helping one exactly. another and exactly. always sharing what we have because we had nothing. And whatever little and we had, we were able it. to share with one another. You have to do. And when you're brought up with those values and all and you and you, you continue that in life, that's what life is all about. 
imagine how the world would be different if everybody thought if like everyone that. everyone thought that, I know. That's why we need more faith in our lives. And, you know, people don't realize that, you know, everything we have is a blessing. It could be taken in a moment, thank as you. we all know. Thank you. Less greed, more yeah. love. Exactly, exactly. I so agree. I thank you, and I may God bless you for all the work that Grazie, you do. Grazie, Now, this salad over here. Uh, allora, this so salad good. is divine. Give it a little twirl. Oh, okay. Because if not, you're going to have the driest salad on the face of yeah. the earth. Not nice. Okay. Let's that put a little so more oil, more of this. A little more dressing. See? I was supposed to put it all, and then I'm afraid it cooks the salad. That rodicchio is, looks delicious. But isn't it gorgeous? Oh. More than delicious. There is a stand at the farmer's market. And it's called Camporoso, and it's two young kids, American, but they grow mostly Italian stuff. So mm. a million different kinds of radicchio, wonderful datterini tomatoes from Sicily, and then peppers, and I love them. So this was today, at the, even the salads must okay. good, Monsignor Jamie. Like, <laughs> kick it up a notch. Kick it up a notch. With Monsignor Jamie. <laughs> Let me see. Grab the radicchio, it's sweet, it's not bitter. My mouth is big, but not that big. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I like big leaves of salad somehow. Very good. So fresh. Yes. And made with love. And the corn in there. Right? I love roasted corn off the cob in a salad. Excellent. But Beatrice, I have to say thank you. I know uh, you, it's been Jamie. a long time, but you're on the show. And I have to say, you're one of those guests. You'll be coming back. We have been very <laughs> unruly. Did yeah. you know this? <laughs> That's because it. we love each other. But we're going to come back. Grazie, and I'm gonna, and Jamie. maybe the next time we'll come to the restaurant and yes, film in the restaurant. So much fun. That would be great. Grazie. Thank you so much. Grazie mille, Monsignor. We always end with a prayer. Okay. See, si, let's. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of faith, and for the gift of family and food. We ask you, Lord, to continue to help us to share what we have with one another, especially good food. May we be able to help those who are less fortunate than we are, and may we continue to share your love with each other through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching this episode of Breaking Bread. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll see you next time on Breaking Bread.